okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to be rebuilding the classic interior shot from one of the scenes of Space Odyssey 2001, or is it 2001 Space Odyssey? I always mix it up. And I am testing out a different microphone today, so if it sounds different than my other videos, then that's what's going on. So I've opened this image up in Photoshop so I can draw on it and show you guys some of my process of how I would recreate this scene and the techniques that I use to recreate lots of other scenes from reference images alone. So the basic geometry of this room is, of course, it's going to be an octagonal tunnel, but it's an octagonal tunnel made up of a bunch of squares. And each of these square panels is, it looks like, a perfect square. So that's important to know because we are going to be sizing things, you know, based on uh, proportion. So one thing I look for is perfect squares and perfect circles. There are no circles in this scene, but if we assume that these square panels, with the exception of these light uh, light panels in between, if they are a perfect square, then it looks like the distance between from this edge to this edge is almost the same as from here to here. It's a little bit more. So if we divide this panel into basically three parallel sections, this middle one can become this dark, I guess, rubber. I'm not really sure what this material is supposed to be. He is um, walking on it in this scene. Uh, but in a different scene, uh, you can see he's walking on a ladder, which is really interesting. I think either this scene or the other one that I'm thinking of was not actually used in the movie. One of them was cut. I think it might have been this one. The one in the movie, he's wearing a red suit and he's walking away from the camera to a hatch. Whereas this background was not normally seen. But anyway, that's just some behind the scenes stuff. So these distances are almost equal to each other. Um, the whole thing is a square. We do have some perfect squares here. All right, that little guy, there's some little square panels here. There's a lot of symmetry. There's not a lot of rectangles except for this long black piece. Um, and these light panels will uh, space them out. Um, at the end of each you know, square panel will be a light piece. And we'll use the array modifier to make four of them. And then we'll use, uh, what is it called? Um, linked copies or linked duplicates to make all the pieces. So we're only we're going to be building one square. <laughs> Pretty nice, huh? And then all the other four times eight, what is that, 32? I, uh, I can't math. The other 32 or whatever will be recreated instantly. And we only have to do a little bit of work, which is my favorite type of backgrounds because there's not a lot of work going on. So let's get to Blender and start a building. Let's do our first piece. I'm going to create a plane. So Shift A to add, go to Mesh and Plane. And it's instantly already a square. And just because I'm used to it, I'm going to size this up by four, Enter, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to actually apply the scale so that we don't have any weird stuff later. I don't think we will, but again, this is a good habit. Control A, apply scale. So now the scale, as far as Blender knows, is still one. There is no scaling because we basically reset the scale. So let's move this up and basically build our um, octagonal tunnel. So let's press to number one to get a flat, I think this is a front view. Yeah, front. And let's go to wireframe mode. Now I'm actually going to make a uh, octagonal tunnel to help us judge the distance of things. So shift A, make a cylinder. And down here, make sure it has eight vertices, which makes it an octagon. Now by default, the cylinder is always offset for some reason. So if we could press seven for an above view and rotate by 22.5, that is half of 45 degrees, which basically makes these sides flat. That's what we want. So 22.5 degrees, We'll rotate a octagon by, you know, half of vertices or whatever you want to call that. So let's size this thing up by maybe eight. Mm, let's do 10. Okay, that's pretty close. Now, this square is going to need to be about the same size as this piece here. So let me get this. This is our view we're looking at. Now, let's flip this thing on its side. R, X, 90. Okay, now when we press number one for a front view, we should be looking down the tunnel, which we're not right now because front view, I need to rotate this cylinder by 90 degrees. So R, Z, 90, enter, there we go. So with the cylinder facing this direction, if we press number one for front view, there we are. We're looking down the tunnel. It's not three-dimensional yet, but if we press the number five, we'll go back to perspective view. Five again will make it the flat orthographic view. Um, so that's just to orient your 3D brain. That's where we're looking. We're looking down the tunnel. Here's our square panel. Let's move it up. So G, select it and press G, Z. And let's basically line it up with, uh, you know, one of these faces here of the octagon. And we can scale it down. So S, G, Z. There we go. It's about the same size as one of these panels. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because when we start duplicating these things, there's going to be a little bit of an overlap. And that is, that is okay. 
we don't want gaps. That's what we don't want. We want this to be an airtight, you know, scene and area. In case we do have an outside HDR or lighting or whatever, we don't want any like lights popping through these these seams because uh, you know that's also how you die in space is bad bad seams. <laughs> so uh, I think we're good with our square now. Let's again apply scale, Control A and click on scale. Just press Shift C. There we go. So with our panel done, we are going to go to our modifiers and add that array modifier. We need to do this before we start duplicating because linked duplicates do not like modifiers, which is really annoying to me. But whatever. So you can make four or six or whatever. I'm just gonna do four because that's what we see in the movie scene. Um, and I think that is it for now. Let's start duplicating this and make our actual cylinder shape. So we'll press one for front view. With our 3D cursor in the middle, we're going to use it as a pivoting point to rotate this around the 3D cursor. So if, if your 3D cursor is not in the middle, just press Shift C. There we go, it resets it to the center. And now this is really important. You cannot do this next trick without this setting changed. Set your orientation, or what is it, your, your transform pivot point um, to 3D cursor, all right? And now all we have to do is press Alt D for linked duplicate. Before you press Enter, press the letter R for rotate. And how much do we want to rotate it? 45 degrees. And now we can press Enter. So we just did Alt D to duplicate it, R, 45, Enter. Now we can duplicate this step again by pressing Shift R. Again, Shift R, 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 Shift R, R. There we go. All right, now if we change our view, oh yeah, look at it. It's coming together. We can get rid of this cylinder. We just kind of use that for a frame of reference. I do that all the time with cubes and to get right angles and you know octagons, circles, things like that. It's okay to use a primitive to help you out with something more complicated. Um, and we're done. Just kidding. Uh, so let's start modeling. I'm gonna use a. I'm gonna use this panel down here because it's flat and it's facing up. To me, that just makes the most sense. And I'm gonna get rid of the floor um, and maybe even the lines. I don't think I really need these lines anymore. We're not. I don't use them. They're just in the way. So if if we select that shape, press Edit. We have our one face selected. Press period on your numpad and voila, we're zoomed in. So let's get our uh, reference image up. And I think I'm gonna do it right here because we're not really, <laughs> there's not a lot of objects. There's literally one object in the scene. It's just duplicated. So let's go to image editor and open. In my pictures folder, I have a reference images folder with a bunch of sci-fi interiors that I am using to build something. And here we go. I'm gonna open it up right here. Awesome. Make sure it's wide enough. Kind of look at things. So we're going to be looking at this guy, although this is the top panel, right? It's facing downwards, so it's actually kind of the opposite of this. So before we divide this into thirds, I do notice, if you look closely, there is like a raised area that most of the stuff is on. Most of this greebly stuff is on one big raised and rounded corner uh, panel, and then there's the light section there. So let's do that first. Let's uh, tab into edit mode, grab this edge, and let's just extend this by pressing E, Y. And let's make it about this big. This is where the light panel is gonna go, the little light square, right? Okay, there, good. So we didn't change this. This is still a perfect square right here, but we've got a little extended area here. We can select this and press I for inset. This is gonna be where the light is. And if you wanna be fancy, E to extrude it down just a hair to give some extra depth there. Go into object mode. There we go. Okay. And now let's make that raised and rounded corner section where most of the stuff is on. So tab back into edit mode, select this main face. Let's um, make it line up with the edge of the light panel. So I and make it about the same inset. See how the things are lining up right here? That's good. We want that consistency with design because that's just how things look good. Now let's extrude it up just a little bit, not very tall. Now here's the tricky part. We gotta grab these little edges here. So go to edge select and click right there. No, there, that little tiny edge. Now if I do shift G and length, it should select all the edges with the same length, but sometimes it grabs extra uh, angles that we don't really want like these guys. We don't want the light panel edges. So unfortunately we gotta do it manually. So select that one, rotate over here. Hold shift and select that one, pan over here. So shift, select that one. And last one, one more. Shift, select the fourth corner. All right, cool. Now to bevel those, control B. And this is a pretty big bevel. If you look, 
it's pretty substantial. So I'm gonna go with it right around there and press plus on my numpad to add more segments to make it nice and round. Cool. And let's uh, hold Alt and select this top, or you can just do the face on top, select that face. And let's bevel this one to bevel these edges. So Control B, not that many pieces, maybe a little bit less. There we go. Because you want uh, most of your noticeable edges, they should not be perfectly sharp, because that's just not that's not realistic. Um, to get rid of this, you know, edges without adding a whole bunch of segments, we can do W and Shade Smooth, and then go into your Object Settings, your Object Data Properties, go to Normals, and turn on Auto Smooth. There we go. So it keeps the sharp edges sharp and the round edges round. Alrighty, now let's divide this thing into thirds, like I said we do a long time ago. Um, so we're gonna get this middle panel here. Now Control R will not work anymore. We can't do an edge loop on this complex shape, but we can divide it up in a different way. So select this, this top face right here, which is goes right up to the bevel. See this piece right here? And then select the other one on the other side. So shift and select that one. Now here's a cool trick. Hit spacebar for your search and type in subdivide. Now if we have two parallel edges selected and we choose to subdivide, it, it just subdivides along one axis, which is really cool, instead of X and Y. But we want two, so turn up your subdivision to two, and there we go, we have our middle panel right where we want it, and it's perfect. Maybe, maybe we can make it a little bit wider, I feel like it might be a little bit narrow. So select it, scale along the Y axis. Oh, I'm still on 3D cursor with a pivot thing. Let's go to individual origin, there we go. So S, uh, X actually. There we go, and if you look closely, this black panel is raised on its own kind of not white piece. So let's inset this, raise this for the not white part, <laughs> and then inset again. This is the black piece right here, and let's just raise, let's extrude this just a little bit. Maybe like, it's like a rubber padding, right? And you can maybe scale it down a little bit to give it some, so it's not just like a chunk sticking out. You can maybe bevel it if you want. There we go, because rubber has soft edges usually. All right, cool. So this, this is our rubber pad. Here's the frame. And then we've got these extra sections over here, which we are uh, gonna, gonna play with. Now these are a little bit more complicated. We're gonna use a Boolean to do some slicing and cutting. Uh, let me see if I can find a good view that really shows these shapes. This one almost shows it. I'll outline it in Photoshop. I'm gonna zoom in right here. So this is really pixelated, I know get my brush tool. So we've got some cutouts. We've got, it's a triangle, I believe, cut out right there. Then there's another triangle cut out right here. And symmetrically, another one cut out right about there. Then there's another square inside that that's cut out. And I and equally on the other side, another square cut out too. So we're going to do the two layers of um, Boolean if we can. And then there's a little little doohickey there. We'll do the greebles last because they're the easiest and the, and the fun, the most fun. So let's do some cutouts. So how do we do that? This has to be symmetrical first of all. So uh, let's get out of edit mode because we need to make a separate object, right? We need to make a boolean, or as I call it, uh, as as Blender calls it, a cutter. So let's put our 3D cursor right here in the middle. So back in edit mode, Shift S and then cursor to select it. So our 3D cursor is right there, get out of edit mode. We're gonna make our cutter with a cube. There we go. So go into edit mode and move the uh, faces out off the center. The origin is still in the middle, that's good. Now make a mirror modifier and voila. That's why we did that edit mode move. Instead of moving the object, we move the vertices so that we can do an easier mirror modifier there. Let's go into edit mode and we're going to uh, turn this square, this cube into a triangle. So shift select these two vertices, spacebar, merge in center, and then go down here and do the same thing here. Select, select, spacebar, merge at center. There we go, we got a triangle. All right, now how wide is this triangle? Well, I'm so glad you asked. It's about the same width, or it is the same width as the frame. We'll just call it that, that kind of tan thing. So. S Y, yep, S Y, as wide as the frame. Yep, good, okay. And in case your scaling is weird, make sure you're on individual origin. Okay, so we can scale individual faces. All right, cool. And how high does this, the tip of this, the, the, the tip of the triangle go? Um, past the halfway point, which is here. 
So it's like in that top fourth. All right, so let's do that. Grab this, what, what would they call this? The uh, apex, I don't know. And let's move it down to right about there. That looks good. Now this triangle cutout, uh, it's hard to see, but they are actually rounded on the edges. They're not, you know, sharp, sharp shapes. So let's grab all those faces around the triangle and bevel them. Okay, add some more segments so it's nice and smooth. Awesome, that's gonna be a nice cutout. G, Z, let's move it up. And it's only gonna cut down a little bit. All right, so let's do the Boolean. Um, so with the cutter selected, next you select your target or what you want to cut. So shift, select the panel down there and control minus on your numpad. That uh, uses the bool tool uh, add-on, I believe, to quickly set up a um, Boolean modifier, which is right here and it automatically used the cube that we made right here. So if we turn it on and off, look, this is what happens, see? The cut will just disappear from, from visibility, but it'll still render. So this looks great. I like this cutout, looks good, but we need to do the other little triangles. So let's go into edit mode of the cube and we need to make another, uh, basically another cube up here to cut out these corners. So put, I'm gonna put my 3D cursor right here, shift A, make a cube. Now when you make an object, already in edit mode of another object, they are the same mesh. So I added a cube to cube, right? There's two cubes within this one mesh. They're not separate objects, uh, but they are separate vertices. So we need to line this up to these corners, make it nice and clean. Move this up to right about there. Remember, we're gonna join, we're gonna make this a triangle just like we did with the other, with the other one. I think right about there looks good to me. Now let's get rid of uh, this unnecessary edge. I'm not sure if we can, Let's try something. Select this edge we don't want and do dissolve edge. Oh, look at that. It made a triangle and it's a solid triangle. Sweet. Hey, look at that. I learned something new on my own video. So again, I selected an edge that I didn't want of a cube. I did uh, delete key and then dissolve edges. And it basically you know, made the face, it got rid of it and closed up the cube. So that's great. So let's round these edges, select, select. Don't worry, we're gonna do the other one over here in just a second. We gotta do this one first and control B, use the same you know, settings that we used on the big one over here, and that's great. Now, how do we get this triangle over here? Well, it's very easy. Um, I'm going to use my 3D cursor where I know it's perfectly in the middle of this whole shape. So this edge is like this, is covering the full like left to right size of this shape. So with this edge selector right here, shift S, 3D cursor to select it. So now I know my 3D cursor is in the middle of my cutter, now I can carefully select this corner, control L to grab it all, and I'm just gonna flip flop it over here. So the way that I do that is I use 3D cursor as my pivoting point. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate and press Enter. And now look, I have a copy of this corner, but it needs to go over there. So escape to cancel that. I'm just going to use the scale trick. So scale along the Y axis and negative one. So my scale being negative one along the 3D cursor on that Y axis basically flip-flops it to the other side. Okay, I hope that I hope that made that clear. If you need to, rewind a few times and watch that again. <laughs> uh, but you gotta have your 3D cursor in the middle, you scale along one axis, uh, and a negative one, enter, and there we go. All right, cool, so that's probably the hardest part right there. Um, let's apply this, because we're gonna do another Boolean to make uh, this little square cut out in the corners. So select your target object, which is the panel. Here's our Boolean, right? Go to the arrow, and you can't apply it because it is a linked duplicate. That another very annoying thing about linked duplicates is is that um, forgot about that. So we probably need to delete all these. <laughs> I hit the same problem when I first made my original model, but that's okay. We can just it's actually easy, you know. Making that octagon is very easy. So now we can apply. Let's get rid of our cutter. Delete. And let's make some square cutters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select this face, put my 3D cursor right there, get out of edit mode, shift A, cube, add a cube. Okay. The 3D cursor being positioned correctly, you know, originally, it just saves you time. So I usually do that to, so I don't have to make an object, move it around, align it, all that stuff. So this is not quite to the top. Maybe shrink it down a little bit. Make sure the cube is going underneath. See that? 
and a little bit uh, closer to the outside. Yeah. And this is a rounded cube. Of course it is. So I'm just going to grab these outer vertical edges and bevel, bevel them a little bit. Let's use this as a cutter. So with the cutter selected, shift, select the target, control minus on numpad, and it did the Boolean, but we punched a hole through it because there is no real depth beyond this point. Um, we can fix that by making this a closed shape. So instead of this being a flat face panel, we're actually going to make this a closed like cube. So um, select the panel, edit, tab into edit mode. I'm going to hold alt and click on the outer edge and it should grab the entire outer edge. Yeah, it did all the way around. Okay. Now we can E for extrude and extrude this downward. So E, Z, right? Z, Z is the up and down. And then uh, once you get it down a few inches, just F to fill it and voila. Now it's a closed cube. And look at this, our cutter is doing what we expect. It's making a little button, a bump. Now, if we go all the way down, look, plop. <laughs> now we just cut through the, the, the floor that we made earlier. So just put it like right around there. Now we need to flip flop this over here, just like we did earlier. So let's find something that's perfectly in the middle, like this long face, shift S, 3D cur uh, cursor to selected. Now it's right there. Out of edit mode, grab our cutter, into edit mode, A for select all, Make sure your 3D cursor is your pivot point. Shift D, enter, S, X, or Y, negative one. There we go, yay. All right, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I feel like it's a little deep. But, you know, do whatever you want. Okay, enough of Booleans. Let's uh, apply that and get on with our day. Delete the cutter. Sweet, look at that nice shape. Oh, you're probably thinking that's so much work, but yeah, but look what we got. We got this really cool shape. Oh, we don't have the cutters on the other side. Um, I know what I can do. I can use the auto mirror um, add-on to save the day. <laughs> so this is a free add-on you need to get. Auto mirror is great. So what it does is with one click of a button, it will mirror and even cut off the other half that you just covered over. So X is left and right, right? The red arrow. So X, Auto mirror, there we go, look. I have the little squares cut out on both sides, right there and right there. Is there a better way to view this? This is really hurting my eyeballs. Well, that was cool. I'm not sure why there's a different color there, but hmm. Um, sometimes when you do Boolean cuts, probably because I did like the, the scale negative one, if you do have a face that has the wrong normals, you can select it, spacebar, flip normal. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. Not like anyone would ever tell anyway, but there we go. So what was I doing? Oh yeah, the auto mirror. I'm going to actually um, apply the auto mirror because these panels are not symmetrical. Like, look over here. We've got, I'm drawing on everything. We've got a square here, but not here. We've got these little corners, but not there. So these panels are not really symmetrical. So once we've done the symmetrical work, we need to you know get out of that. So apply the mirror modifier apply. There we go. So now it's baked into the mesh. It's symmetrical and ready to go. All right, let's get rid of this panel by pressing the letter N. So we've got our kind of our base model done. Now let's do the little detail pieces, right? The little greebles. Um, and it's really hard to see these in detail. I, I think I found one other shot from the movie that helped me a little bit, but there's not a lot to go on. So uh, let's make this golden frame here which is on, it will be on this triangle on the left, on our left. So edit mode, let's get this, let's get our 3D cursor in the middle. So shift, oh, shift S, cursor to selected. Shift A, add a cube, shrink it down to, I don't know, maybe right there, that's about, looks good to me. Cool. And uh, let's shrink it down vertically. So S, Z, like that. Grab this top face. Let's I for inset and E to extrude downwards. There we go. Now, if you want to smooth this out, hold Alt and select that outer edge and then Shift and Alt to select the inner edge. And then you can bevel that maybe one or two times or with one or two faces. There we go, cool. And this will be a gold texture, which we'll make next. And then these little corner pieces are hard to see what they are, but it looks like a great and maybe this whole thing slides out. I don't know what the purpose is of these panels. Um, it, it's better when you know the purpose of something because then you know what to not make. <laughs> so let's make like a little latchy thing you can pull, slide in with your hands. Um, 
and yeah, and it's going to fill up this square, whereas the other square cut out is is empty on down here is empty. So let's go in edit mode. Let's put our 3D cursor right here where it needs to be. Shift A cube, shrink it down. They they look different actually. This is the corner of the next panel. It looks like there's a vertical slide piece. But over here, this looks a little bit thicker. So that's going to be this one. Um, do some loop cuts. So control R, maybe make four of them. Enter, enter. Grab these individual edges in edge select mode. Bevel them with a face in the middle. So that's three divisions. And then grab that center face. Ooh, this is getting tricky. Oh, you got you to gotta use the side view here. That one, that one, that one, and that one. And then just GZ to move it up. You've got a nice little bumpy thing. You can grab this edge and bevel it. Oops. That edge. Do some beveling. Cool. That looks nice. And then the sliding piece, which looks like this thing right here. Um, I'm actually going to copy... Or is it this this baseline here to get the same shape? So in 3D in X-ray view, I just grab the bottom faces to make sure I have the right you know size. Shift D and then slide it along the Y. Seven for above view. Let's make sure it's all lined up with those edges. I'm going to press F to fill. So now it's a solid face. And E to extrude upwards. Let's get out of X-ray mode. Back into object mode, turn off x-ray, there we go. All right, now I'm going to um, make an, a little lip, scale it in on itself, so individual origins there. And let's make like a raised sliding piece that you can move in with your finger. So shift D, enter, size it down, and then size it in on the y-axis, scale it up. And I want these to be, this is super meticulous. I mean, there's a very small chance someone's going to know <laughs> that I did that <laughs> when it's all the way out here. But you know what? This those little pixels. Those little pixels make the difference. Um, inset again. Now watch this. If I bring this inset all the way in, there's this weird inversion of the beveled edge. So you can just invert a little bit, confirm that, and then just, and then just scale it scale it in. All right, happy with that. Next little greeble thing is these little pipes. So these pipes are on, looks like the bottom of each panel. So this is the bottom. Oh, and there's a little, there's a little hook thing we didn't do yet. So let's add these little pipes on the bottom, which is down here on the right side. And they line up with these square cutouts. We need to put them actually outside this beveled portion, which is like the main, you know, chunk that we raised up. Um, so we need more of a gap. So that's a little bit of a mistake on my part, but that's okay. We can we can give us ourselves some more room on this outer edge. Okay, so we're going to move this edge out and this one too. So grab them both, grab that edge and the edge. And then using the median transform point, we can scale them out away from each other. So SX, like that, see, SX. If we were on an individual, it wouldn't work because there is no, there's nothing in the middle. So median point SX and give it a little bit of a, a space. And then let's move these out as well to keep things even right about there. All right, now we got this empty space right here for this little cylinder thingy. I don't know what it is. It looks like a whistle. So shift S, put our cursor there. Let's make a cylinder. Make it 16, R, X, 90, enter. Size it on down. And like I said earlier, it's going to line up with these, um, these square cutouts. So seven for above view. Let's just put it right here to make sure the size is right. Okay, cool. Move it back over here. And it looks like it's raised up a little bit and there might be a little something kind of coming out of one end. Looks like a door joint or something. Okay, cool. And there's a little bit of a base. So we can shift S, 3D cursor there, add a cube and shrink it way down to be this 
to be the base that's holding it, which we can't see it because this is actually, the cylinder's too low. So let's GZ to move it up like that. Yeah, cool. And I broke my, I, I went against what I said earlier, where it lines up with the cube cutout. Let's move this all back. There we go, that's good enough. Okay, cool. No one knows what it is, but that's okay. It's fantasy, you don't have to have all the answers. And let's duplicate this all the way uh, down, make one more over on this side. So seven for an above view, shift D Y, and line up, just eyeball it. That looks good to me. Cool. Um, and there's this little, it looks like a hook. Like you could put a rope through this little hole. <laughs> and it's right up, it's on the panel, but it's right here in the middle. So shift S 3D cursor. That's not where we want it, but it is centered. So let's add the cube, shrink it down. You know, I delete my default cube all the time, but I still use it. I still use the cubes. All right, that looks like the base of it. And then I for inset, make this a little bit skinnier, extrude it, shrink it, extrude it again, and then extrude it again. Here we're gonna make a loop. So make a loop cut here, make two of them. So plus, enter. And then with these two loop cuts selected, S, X. Try to make it like a rounded octagon kind of shape. Grab these three faces and the other ones. And we're going to make a hole through this. So the easiest way without using a Boolean is use inset on both sides. Make sure it's doing this and not this. If it's doing individual pieces, then press I again and it'll inset them all together. So there, both sides are the same. And then spacebar, type in bridge and bridge edge loops right there. Awesome. And that connects the two faces into a hole. Yay. And if you really want to smooth this thing out, make it look more rounded, you can grab these hard edges here. Oops, there, and then you can bevel them, you know, once or maybe twice. And from far away, you know, it looks round. And also uh, press W and apply Shade Smooth again. You do have to redo that whenever you add sharper edges. Uh, maybe these insides need to be beveled too to give it the real roundness illusion. Control B and don't overlap the bevels. There we go, cool, looks nice, right? Uh, what else do we have here? We've got these corner pieces. We got this square, the rubber thing. Um, there is some little dot down here. I don't know what that is. So let's go over here. Select it. Shift S cursor to selected. Shift A and just add a little cylinder. Shrink it way down. It's just going to be a little button or dot or something like that. And it's right around the apex of this right there. Make it maybe flatter. There we go. Who knows what it is, but it, it, it's going to balance out, you know, the detail up here. There's got to be a few things down there. And um, there is the two cylinders. Cool. Well, I think that is it for the panel modeling. Now let's uh, duplicate this again. So press number one, shift C to put our 3D cursor in the middle. And we're going to do that rotation trick again. But we have to make sure our 3D transform pivot point is the 3D cursor. Awesome. Now shift D R 45 enter. And now shift R will repeat that step. So shift R R R R R R. Let's make sure it looks oh man, that looks so cool. So cool. And we just made one panel. That's my kind of 3D art, the lazy kind. We need to do some materials. And this is super easy materialing. Um, so let's drag this up here. Probably won't even need to use nodes, honestly. It's, there's no real textures yet. So go into your materials tab. Let's add, um, let's call just just white. Make another one. New, call it rubber. Make another one. New, and call it gold. I think that's all there is in this entire room. And interestingly enough, his suit is that gold tone too. So this is like... There's only two colors in this whole image. You know, it's kind of yellow, orange, and, and white and black. So I guess one color. All right, uh, so we're in material mode, which means we can preview the materials. Let's go to white, drag this up again, and go to surface, and make sure that the color is white. This is not a metal. It's uh, basically a plastic. So I'm going to uh, specular put specular on halfway. 
roughness up pretty high because it's not a reflective um, shiny plastic. So let's keep it around, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And um, I'm actually gonna go, maybe let's try Eevee. Let's do a live render view. We need to have a light source. So shift A, make um, light, let's do a point light. Go to the light bulb, turn it, I don't know, 1000. Yeah, ooh, that's so creepy. <laughs> the fall off is really cool. I've never seen that before. Ooh, spooky. Let's make two. I'm gonna do Alt D to do, make a linked light. So whatever change we make on this one will be made on the other one. There we go. So we can turn them both up together if we want to watch. See, they both, they copy each other. All right, so we just get some lighting and shading going on. Um, so we've got our white texture. Go back to surface. Make sure this is all the way pure white. Now let's make our rubber and just grab those faces. But remember the edge is also rubber too. So um, shift or hold control and hit the plus key on your numpad area and it will expand the selection. If you go too far, it'll get the frames. We don't want the frame. Just grab that and go to rubber, click on rubber and click assign and make sure the color is black. Of course, there we go. Uh, make sure roughness is down kind of low, specular, I guess up all the way. It depends on if it's a shiny rubber or a flat, you know, matte rubber, that's kind of up to you. All right, so to colorize the frame, here's a cool selection trick that I just learned recently. See how there's assign, select, and deselect? The deselect is really helpful when we want to take just a material selection out of our current selection. So click on rubber and click select. There we go, we already have this selected. Now we're gonna grow the selection onto the frame. So hold control and hit plus, plus. See, it grabbed around the frame. But here's the cool trick. Click on deselect, look at that. It deselected the rubber piece, right? It's pretty simple, but I just never used that until recently. Uh, maybe some of you guys out there are like, I discovered that on day one, you are an idiot, but you know, that's fine. I learned it. So go to gold and click assign. Now let's give it some color. I don't know the exact color of gold. It's somewhere in here. Yeah, not too red, not too yellow. Basically orange, I guess. I don't know, maybe more on the yellow side. Um, and this is metal, so turn up metallic, turn up specular. And if you want this to be a really clean polished gold, do that. If you want it to be a little bit more matte, less less shiny, you know, around halfway. So I'm gonna put it around um, dot three, four, six. And that looks cool. Let's grab the other golden pieces, which is this frame. So click on just any of these faces and press control L. Because remember when we made, when we made this piece, it was a standalone cube. It's not actually part of this mesh. or not collected. So grab that control L to get the rest of it. Click on gold and assign. Grab one of these, grab one of those parts, one of those parts and press, press control L and voila, we've got all of them. Oh, we didn't get the base of this little switch thing. So shift control L, there we go. Now we got it all. Click on gold, click on assign and that's it. Oh, we got to do the um, little cylinder things. And looky here, we got some funkiness going on where it's overlapping. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do to fix that, but we'll figure it out. So tab in edit mode, grab all, so A for all, right? And if we shrink it all together, uh, we need to do individual origins, there we go. We shrink it like this, look at that, all the separate pieces. <laughs> Oops, we don't want that, then let's do median point. I guess that's the downside of doing my, my messy method of modeling, which is, you know, separate meshes all over the place. Okay, there, yeah, I think that fixed it. Yeah, yay, an easy fix, yay. All right, so grab the cylinder, grab that cylinder, control L. Ah. You have to have your mouse over the 3D viewport, by the way. Keyboard shortcuts are subject to what window you have your mouse over, just FYI. So mouse over on this part, control L, click on gold and assign. And there are some cubes underneath them. So grab that little cube and that little cube, control L. And for some reason, they're not actually touching anything. I don't know what's up with that. Let's grab the cylinders and just move them straight down. Look, if I do fr front view, zoom in. Yeah, they're just floating up there. I'm not sure how that happened. There we go. So we look at that. I love it. All right, now true to the aesthetic of the scene, the lights are pretty bright. So let's try 3000. Oh yeah, 
it's already looking better. And the, yeah, this plastic is, uh, this rubber is a little too shiny. So we can turn the roughness up. We can also turn specular down to make it blacker, like a really light absorbent, non-reflective rubber like in, the, like in the original scene. The gold seems a little too bright to me. So let's tone that down by just dropping the brightness of that color, maybe making it a little bit richer, orange, orangey red. And we can also turn up the uh, roughness or down the specular, whichever one looks better. Um, sweet, that looks great. Let's press number one for a front view. Press five to make that front view, you know, three-dimensional. Kind of position your camera roughly in the middle, your, your viewport rather, your, 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 your view, 3D view. And then press Control alt zero to position your camera to wherever your viewport is. Pretty nice, huh? Now let's grab the camera. Why can't I select the camera? What's going on here? There we go. And let's make it a nice wide angle, maybe like a classic 35. G Z Z to shoot zoom in. Yeah, kind of cinematic. If you want to get real dramatic, maybe like a 16 or a 12 and move it in again. And you can even increase, you know, how many arrays there are if you want to make this tunnel longer. Let's do like let's do eight for all of them. So before you hit render, we do need to delete this light that was kind of the default scene light that's always there. So select it and delete. Uh, let's go back to camera view and render it. So in EV, it's going to look like this. Not bad. This looks good. You know, a lot can be done with this. Some compositing, some Photoshopping, add a character in there, maybe some, you know, little story pieces like some floating tools, some splatters of blood on the wall. And instantly you've got a piece of art that makes a viewer wonder what the heck is going on. And gee golly, this looks cool. But let's try it in cycles and see what it looks like. Cool, so it looks brighter, and I guess it kind of is, probably because of the ray tracing. Um, lights do work a little differently, and it seems like the, the luminosity, like the intensity of lights, is different when you switch from EV to cycles. Um, smart people out there listening, please tell me why in the comments, because I'm sure there's a good reason that I just don't know yet. I don't hate the EV version. I actually like it, although it is a bit more um, video game flattish. Okay, because I was having so much fun modeling this, uh, I forgot to actually add the light panels. <laughs> so let's uh, select the bottom piece, grab what is gold for some weird reason. And these two these two faces, let me get out of a uh, rendered view. There we go. These two faces right here are going to be the light panels. Go to your materials tab, add a new one, click new and name it light. Click on principle, let me expand this a little bit. Principle BSDF and just press the letter E. It'll go right to emissions. Click on Assign, and there we go. And let's put the brightness at maybe like 16. We'll have to just do a quick render and see. Uh, make sure your point lights that we added earlier for EV are just deleted. If you're gonna stick with cycles, just delete them because um, you don't need them anymore. Because honestly, this scene is lit by the light panel pieces. So there we go, that looks great. Nice, even, soft illumination, which is great. If you wanna emphasize the, you know, the, the edges and cavities here, you could maybe play with some ambient occlusion if you know how to use that, uh, maybe some texture painting, but um, this is this is how it's supposed to look. So it looks good to me. Uh, let's do some final touches to make this render look great uh, and using the compositor. So first I'm just going to render this result right now. So F12. All right, here it is. It took my, uh, it took my RTX 2080 uh, 19 seconds to render and it was a little bit bright. So I turned those emission panels down to 10 and this is the result I got. I like it. So let's go and uh, split our screen. Compositor will be on top. And let's make this an image viewer so we can view the render result. There it is. Just If you don't see that, select render result. Awesome. And uh, this will change as we update our compositor settings. So change this to compositor. Turn on use nodes if it's not. And you should see something like this. Let's press N to get rid of that guy. There's nothing going on here. It's empty. So shift A, add a mix RGB over here and shift A again, type in GL for glare. Let's plug the image into uh, image and then image out to image two. So we have basically a crossfader between the original untouched version and the glared version. Let's change the blend mode to add so it'll layer nicely and be bright and change the type of glare to fog glow. You can keep it medium because it's quicker and turn our mix all the way up to one so that this Image data that comes out of here is nothing but glare. Um, that way we can add it on top. You can play with the threshold, but right now I think it's okay right where it is. Um, if the glare is too big and too, you know, too much, 
You can tune your size down to like seven. There we go, it looks a little bit more realistic. Um, so we have this factor right here where we can personally add or take away glare to our liking. Here's another trick that I just thought of to bring back some of the detail in these uh, edges. If you want to emphasize that, click on the mix RGB here, shift D to duplicate and put another one earlier in the chain, change this to multiply and grab the, not the shadows, but the AO, which is ambient occlusion, plug it into there and boom, look at that. It brings back in those dark, those dark edges. And you can, you know, take it away if you want, add a little bit, it's up to you. You can even, if you want to really make it dirty, um, make it curves, put it on the AO output and drop it. So it's even darker and it's actually kind of noisy because the AO is not, um, it's not denoised. I suppose you could add a denoise node there. I'm not sure. Yeah, there we go. Cool. That looks pretty, pretty edgy if you're going for that look. Now, one thing I have not touched on in this scene is depth of field, which is another way to give some nice realism to your scenes. And of course, I did not add any actual textures. So like I can add some, you know, scratches and some imperfections um, to the, the this plastic specifically to give it some more variation and realism. But uh, hey, I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know I kind of uh, blew through some of the keyboard shortcuts to kind of do things quickly. And I apologize if you got lost or maybe I, I, I make mistakes in every video. So hopefully it wasn't a major one, whichever I did, whichever mistake I made for this video, hopefully it wasn't a big one. <laughs> um, and you know, I just realized I didn't make these little bumps gold. There, we, there that's one mistake, just, just one of them. Um, <laughs> but I hope you had fun. Hope you learned some awesome tricks. I love, love, love to see you guys as renders of my scenes and tutorials. So if you make something cool that you're proud of, send it my way to daniel at danielgrovephoto.com. Make this a story piece, add some props, add some character, add some blood, add some tentacles. I don't know, maybe a monolith, um, make it cool and send it my way. Okay. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. So I know you love what I'm making. Share my videos online and comment down below because I love to interact with you guys. Thanks for watching and have a awesome week.